All right, folks. Well, a lot of liberals, a lot of progressives, a lot of good Bernie Democrats uh, are happy uh, about the Tim Walls pick, which you would think would make Van Jones happy about the Tim Walls pick since he's kind of wasn't he part of the progressive wing of the Democratic Party? Well, this just shows you yeah. <laughs> what a despicable sellout this guy is. Van Jones admits that Kamala picking Walls was her caving into some of these darker parts in the party in terms of appeasing anti-Jewish bigots that have gotten marbled into this party. Again, a lot of conservative Republicans said that the snubbing of Josh Shapiro was anti-Semitic, which is very strange for a cohort of people who are so against DEI. They seem to be really triggered that a Jewish man was passed over. And the only the only reason a Jewish man could get passed over is because of anti-Semitism. Well, you, right. you seem to yeah. be wanting some DEI uh, in Ge that field. Genocidal right? intent could not ever be the reason. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. But here's Van Jones making the case that, yeah, Kamala caved to radical left-wing anti-Semites by picking Tim Walls. A little risky, though, Van, yeah. that, that she didn't go with Shapiro to kind of lock down Pennsylvania. I mean, yes, yeah. David Challing was saying earlier, just because you pick him as your running mate doesn't mean you automatically win Pennsylvania. But I got to think it would have helped just a little bit. Hey, listen, that, that the, the conservatives, the right wing, the Republicans, they were chewing their fingernails down to the knuckle because they were afraid of a Josh Shapiro. They were afraid of a Mark Kelly. They're not as afraid of this uh, new governor because they think they can define him. Uh, and I, but So he, here's the challenge you've got in this party. Uh, and you know, people don't want to talk about it, we got to talk about it. On the one hand, you have a, a lot of young people who are concerned about Gaza. You have a lot of Muslims and Arabs and others. They have not felt seen by the Biden administration. Oh. Uh, you start, start hearing uh, that genocide I wonder joke why that, that, was is. Building, that was building. Yeah. And uh. so those folks, needed to have a, a candidate that they could feel comfortable with. This helps them in that regard. But you also have anti-Semitism that has gotten marbled into this party. You can be you know, for uh, the Palestinians without being an anti-Jewish bigot, but there are some mm. anti-Jewish bigots out there. And there's some disquiet now, and there has to be. How much of what just happened is caving into some of these darker parts in the party? So that's going to have to get mm. worked out. It's going to have to yeah. get talked through. Well, I mean, hey, man, my, my search for a prostitute with teeth is over. <laughs> yeah, right. You found them. Exactly. I found one. <laughs> Van Jones going with the line that by choosing Tim Walls over Josh Shapiro, Kamala's caving to anti-Jewish bigots within the party. And this is where I have to go here. It has to be noted. Look at this. Look at this. Yanam Cohen, some Israeli official. He's got the silver check. There he is with a picture of Tim Walls. It has, it has been an honor to work with Governor Walls on deepening the Israel-Minnesota partnership. Yeah. Thank you, Governor Tim Walls, for standing with Israel during our darkest hour on October 7th. The U.S.-Israel Strategic Alliance is strong and enduring. Our friend Nick Cruz, Tim Walls is a genocidal Zionist who opposes the BDS movement. This is the person the Bernie left is celebrating and as you can see item number four on that tweet their opposition to the bds movement waltz has opposed the boycott divestment and sanctions movement which seeks to pressure israel through economic and political means so we put that into chat gpt so it's not it's not even that tim walls is anti-israel tim walls is terrible on this issue terrible and yeah i'm sorry to be a ball breaker here but like you're either a hardline free palestiner or you are uh you know functionally speaking a genocidal stooge and that is what tim walls is uh the fact that he is not literally a genocidal like literally an idf goon which is what josh shapiro was the fact that she didn't pick an idf soldier makes her an anti-semite because she considered him and thought hey maybe this is too much maybe this is too much for a party that is over 70 percent opposed to the genocide in gaza because they didn't pick him that makes that makes that means she caved to yeah, anti-Semitism. They, did, they didn't want to spend the next 90 some odd days explaining why they picked a guy who compared protesters to the KKK while they're trying to win yes. back Gen Z voters. Um, yeah, Van Jones is really and this is saying something he he is in the running for the most disgraceful most morally compromised person 
on any of these channels because he knows better. Of course. You have some people like Claire McCaskill, I, I have no doubt believes every word that she says. She's, she's a, just a horrible, horrible human being top to bottom. Uh, Van Jones, man, he comes out of radicalism. He, he's educated in these matters. He knows what Israel is. He knows damn well who's bidding he's doing when he says things like this. The purpose of that soundbite is to give credibility to the idea that being anti-Zionist is being anti-Semitic because where are your specifics? Anti-Semites have been marbled into the party. Well, okay, you're saying it's not anti-Semitic to be pro-Palestine. But you are saying it's anti-Semitic because otherwise, what do you mean by that? Right. What do you mean anti-Semites have been woven into the party? Can you show me the people that you're talking about? Because I promise you, I promise you, if pressed, what he's going to show you are people protesting what's going on in Gaza. Okay, so it is anti-Semitic then. This is the game. you know. And there's another example. He's not stupid. You know, that's all innuendo. He doesn't have to prove anything. He just puts that out there as an established fact to throw the stink and suspicion onto all resistance to this. Now, it's not it's not working with the general public, but unfortunately, the people who would think that Van Jones and his ilk have anything to say that's worth listening to vote to a disproportionate degree because they tend to be politics news addicts who actually watch this shit. And they tend to be elderly. What is the average age on CNN? 69 of their viewers. You know, these people have disproportionate power in an election. Yes, yes. And, you know, I would expect that kind of rhetoric from where we have seen it for the most part, which is from the right. Glenn Beck, you know, right. Ari Fleischer, uh, Newt Gingrich. I would even expect it to some extent from like very centrist Democrats like Joe Manchin, but Joe Manchin has actually expressed approval at this pick. So the fact that Van Jones, who certainly to the left of Joe Manchin, comes on here and says you cave to the radical left anti-Semites, yeah. he's just that, a is whore. Just, that is prostitution. He's just a whore. I mean, I'm sorry, yeah, I don't mean all. to be crude, but you know, uh, th that's what it is. That's yeah, what it we is. Try, we just, try to avoid that here. Yeah, there's a highbrow show, obviously, yes, but uh, yes. but that is what that is. There's no other way to explain that. What a disgrace! What a disgrace! Really is really unbelievable. Just yeah, he, he, yeah, he, he must be, he might, they must have doubled his pay because he's really been knocking it out of the park lately. Yeah. Almost yeah. every week, Van Jones says something where you just say, how the fuck do you sleep at night, man? Please clap. <laughs>